we are going to create a 3D model of a landscape. So this is an easy way to do that with QGIS and a great plugin called QGIS 23JS. Now, first of all, I just wanted to talk a little bit about DEM, Digital Elevation Model. So that is what we're looking at in a close up. Each one of these squares is a pixel of the DEM and each and in the middle of each square is a point. I just wanted to create this so you could see what a DEM looks like up close and what each pixel is delineated. Now, why is this important? Because a DEM is going to tell you what kind, how, what the resolution of the DEM is. So this is a one arc second DEM from the SRTM, Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. Uh, one arc second equates to approximately 100 feet. There are also one third arc second DEMs out there that equate to approximately 30 feet and also much more in depth and higher resolution DEMs that come from LiDAR, which are going to be in the meters or the centimeters. So this is a very large DEM uh, with a bigger, a lower resolution at about 100 feet by 100 feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the vector points here, remove layer, and we'll be left, it's a huge file because there is a point at each center of each pixel. So when that's gone, then I'm gonna show you how the DEM looks like when we zoom out. So then the DEM, this is what's called a shaded relief. And it looks like mountains and what it truly is. Um, we're gonna go ahead and click on that. It's called a hill shade. And we're gonna change that back to what it was. A DEM is gonna look like this. So a good place to find DEMs is Earth Explorer. Uh, earthexplorer.usgs.gov. You're going to find a lot of great stuff there. You have to sign up, but then you can go ahead and get a lot of great stuff to explore using QGIS, uh, both DEMs and satellite photography and imagery and ortho mosaics and historical imagery as well. Uh, so now what we want to do is add some uh, imagery like we're talking about. So we're going to go ahead and use the quick quick map services Esri satellite tile. And now that's gonna be underneath the DEM. So we're gonna click that off. And so what we have here is a ortho mosaic of the this area. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click. Well actually, first of all, I'm gonna do create a polygon just for demonstration purposes later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a temporary scratch layer. It's gonna be a polygon. And then we're just gonna go ahead and create a random shape here and then hide it. So then we're going to hit the plugin, QGIS 23JS. You come up to an empty screen, we we're in the sky, we're floating in the sky. It's beautiful, it's peaceful. Uh, the way to start this process is to hit, to click on the DEM that you have loaded. So sometimes you're going to get this column of doom, the never ending column of doom. It's not fun, but it can be easily fixed. It's only that way because the project is in the wrong CRS. So we go back here and we change this geographic coordinate system to the pseudo mercator and that should fix our problem. So we hit the plugin again and yes it did. So here we have a beautiful model of our area, our landscape. Um, the first thing you probably want to do is change up that relief so that it looks a little more exaggerated so we can see what's going on there. So that is easy. You just hit scene, scene settings. 
So the base width at 100 is usually fine. A vertical exaggeration is what we're looking for. So start slow. Don't jump into 100 or anything like that. You're going to get some really weird things. Uh, start out with, say, 3, 2, 3. And then you can see that things got a little bit more exaggerated and easier to understand. And the vertical shift actually brings it all down. So if you do, let's say you do a 40 and you have this huge weird thing and you want to bring this down, you actually put in minus, let's say, a 1,000 and apply that. Okay, that looks really, really weird. So let's say 200 and apply that. And it brings it down a little bit. So that's something to just be aware of. But we don't want to do that. Um, the materials, there's only three materials in this plugin. Uh, Lambert material is slightly uh, rough. And the Fong material is slightly a little more, you can't really tell with this uh, imagery, but it's a little bit more slick and the two material is a little different as well and in fact maybe i'll show this with a different imagery but it's not it's something that you can experiment with on your on your own coordinates you can click on uh the area you can click on the map to get the coordinates of an area double click and then you get here you get the uh coordinate system coordinate coordinates um, so you can change that to lat long if you want. Uh, so yeah, that's the basics of getting that. We're actually, I can tell we're in that cartoon, uh, material. Hang on. Tune material, Lambert material. And so, oh yeah, also in here you can change the sky into a solid color, but what's, what's really the point of that? We also have point line and polygon layers, as well as a point cloud layer that you can load JSON point clouds onto into this uh, viewer. But we will not go into that. That's too complicated for this simple tutorial. The other things you're going to want to know is clicking on each layer gives you its own dialog. So when we're in the DEM layer, the, the raster layer, we have a resampling level. So this gives you more detail. So if you jack that up, you're going to get more detail in your map. This gives you surrounding blocks that expand the map view, map canvas image outward to things that you don't see in the map canvas image. So we don't really want that right now. And another one is the clip DEM with polygon layer. So that one is why I made that quick scratch layer to show you how that works when you have a DM polygon or a polygon layer in your project, you can clip this DM to that so that you have basically a custom shape. So if you had say a state park outline or something to that mat, something like that, you can clip it to that shape. And that will take a lot of memory power if you have a very complicated uh, polygon. So we're just going to get rid of that though. You can change the image on this model. This is the map canvas image that you see in the in the main canvas. Uh, you can also add a, any of the layer images so we could add that DEM imagery and use that instead. In fact that's looking pretty interesting right now. Pretty cool. You can also use an image file or a solid color. The resolution is how intricate your, your imagery is, of course. So jacking that up to 400 will definitely uh, tax your computer more than if it was at 100, but it's going to look a lot better. Now, if you want to zoom in and zoom out, you can use the middle mouse wheel. I am using the left mouse wheel to orbit and the right to pan. And if you hit, I can't remember if it's, sh yeah, there's other, there's other buttons, but you, you can find, you can find out by a little bit of experiment and experimentation, how that those work. So that's how that works. And every time you hit, okay, it recalculates the, the image at this level. So sometimes if you have pretty big models, it's going to take 
quite a while to recalculate that image. So the scene is the next thing. The scene is the next thing we should look at. Scene settings. We look through those. Controls. Camera. You can use. You can have an orthographic perspective. That's kind of interesting. Useful for some types of maps. Uh, layer, you can add that point cloud layer here. Decorations, you can add an, an arrow. Um, change the color. Open that up. It's kind of cool. The arrow actually points north no matter what you do. So that's kind of neat. You can double click. or Let me actually get back out of orthographic view. Go back to perspective. You can uh, double click on the middle and orbit around this area as well and you can watch you can watch as the north arrow points to the north now let's let's style this dm up a little bit how about that so we're going to style that we're going to go from a single band gray to a single band pseudo color and we're going to use a different color ramp and you're going to classify that data and then apply that and then what you're going to get is this this beautiful, beautiful imagery. So then we can go back into our plugin and we have a very interesting looking landscape. So we can do that in many, many different ways. So now we just wanna get this uh, recorded or saved in some way. So we have the file and we export to web. I'll do that in a second, but first, we can save as an image, just, just the way you see it here. You can save it as a GLTF, which is usable in other 3D programs like Blender. Um, that's very useful as well. And then, so exporting to web is really cool because you can, uh, you can actually share it with people from your website and they can also have a little bit of a control. They can have a uh, control panel here as if you save it in this template. So let's just do a temporary version of this. So it's a temporary directory and we'll call it, we'll just call it Crater Lake. And we'll call the title page Crater Lake as well. We'll enable the viewer to run locally so that it can run on my browser as opposed to having to load it into a server. And then we will use the 3D viewer with panel and export that. And it is a somewhat of a larger file, so it'll take a second and then go ahead and take a look. And so here, here's on here's what we have on the web browser. Any person with access to this can simply move the, uh, the model around like this, just the same way that we do up and down and all around, as well as having the ability, if we had more layers, they can uh, click them visible on and off, and they can bring down the opacity and bring it back up, as well as creating a custom plane. So that's pretty cool. And so that is the overall tutorial on that and hopefully that helped you out with what you need to know in order to start working on 3d models of the landscape that you want to work with and i appreciate you watching this and if you have any questions just uh put them in the comments below thanks